created for the two new rangers, the Wrecker and Jet Zords, which are a mantis and scarab, of course, as their animal forms. And General Burke is back and he's impressed by it, and he says that they can be loaded up with Morphex as soon as the paperwork is filled out. Just a whole pile of pink pages, which Ben and Betty volunteer to fill out, which they do until it gets mixed up with papers that are to go in the shredder. And of course, it all gets shredded to pieces. All the hard work for nothing, the bumbling fools. <laughs> but on to the real plot of the episode. Blaze and Roxy are listening in to the Rangers' communications with uh, Robotron called Antenatron. And they find out that all the Rangers are going to meet up at the gym. So they ambush them in the parking lot. Their plan is to capture Steel. To try again at making him evox his body through the Cybergate. After a victory of the Tronics, the Rangers return to base and report the situation to the Commander Shaw and General Burke, to which the General orders that Steel be deactivated immediately and put in storage. But none of the Rangers agree with that, especially Nate, who really sees him as his brother. I mean, he is partially made from his DNA, after all. And early in the episode, the two really were looking out after each other, trying to do the maintenance on each other, one mechanical, the other doing exercise. So yeah, the two have a pretty tight relationship despite one only existing for a short time. And Devon reasons that the Rangers help people in need and right now Steel needs them. The team deduces that if the Cybergate is fully destroyed then there's no need to give rid of Steel because there'd be no danger. Of course if his body is taken over then Evox will be unleashed on the world and that'll be a big disaster. So the team smuggle their robot ranger out and go back to the warehouse because where else is it going to be? It's too large to move it anywhere. And just before the rangers decide to rush in and do some action, General Burke is caught up with them because, yeah, he knows that they disobeyed orders. And he orders that Steel has to be taken care of immediately. But they get cut off because Blaze and Roxy have captured Ben and Betty, who were just off to the sides during their excursion outside. And at this point, the general can't follow the rules so strictly because he doesn't know what to do prioritize the mission or save his kids. And then Steel himself voluntarily gives up and says he'll go with them in exchange. So the brother and sister get released and the robot ranger is captured. And they don't even send any Tronics either to fight the rangers. Why they do it, they just leave them assuming they won't do anything. And Steel gets the same speech to the general that rangers help people need and right now the general's kids needs him. So immediately after that, Burke understands Steel and Nate truly are brothers and family, and they need to help each other. I mean, Steel even says that while Evox will be strong in his body, he knows the Rangers can destroy him. Well, the Rangers ain't having any of that. I mean, they go to rush in to fight, but it turns out it's not needed because Evox's data is rejected by Steel's body because it's not entirely robotic. It's part human DNA thanks to Nate. And Steel confidently responds to that by taking his sword and destroying the Cybergate forcing Evax all the way back into the Cyber Dimension. At which point, Antenatron decides to fight alongside a bunch of Tronics. And by fight, I mean the Rangers are just fighting all the Tronics, and we don't see any shots of Antenatron fighting at all. Which I thought was hilarious. We have a monster of the week who doesn't do anything. <laughs> However, they quickly summon a Giga Drone as well as some Gigatronics. And Devin is fighting it on his own at first. However, General Burke returns to base and orders the immediate deployment of the two new Zords, even though all the paperwork hasn't been fully filled out through procedure, of which only one page had been salvaged. <laughs> and these two have an ability to teleport right into the fray. So Devin is outnumbered, fighting both Gigatronics and a Gigadrone on his own. So our two new Bug Zords are able to absorb the more facts from the Gigatronics, and that destroys them. As for the Antanadron, well... It's so weak that Devin only has to attack it once with his Cheetah Slash, and that completely destroys it. It doesn't really get any sort of special move in. And of course, Ravi and Zoe are on the ground, and they destroy it with their regular Beast Blasters. So yeah, very quick end to the battle. But really, that's why the any fighting this episode, it was all narrative based. Speaking of the narrative, we still have one last moment back at the base, where he apologizes to Steel and recognizes that he's truly a valuable member of the team. And when the general says that he can always count on Steel to lend a hand, Steel takes it literally and offers him his hand. He just detaches it. Druidge Burke thinks it's a hilarious joke and starts laughing at it. Here's my problem with General Burke. 
he is really miscast with his actor. He's supposed to be this pretty high-ranking and serious military officer, but everything he says just sounds so over-the-top and almost cartoonish. Now, I don't know if that's his acting or the direction, but I just don't like it. He does not strike me as someone who would be a high-ranking member of a military organization. Commander Shaw can just take control of a situation and remain focused and serious. But with General Burke, it always sounds like his entire presence is a complete joke. I mean, when he breaks out laughing at the end, he really laughs and it sounds really nice and natural. So I think if he was a more comedic character, this actor would have been much better. I really don't know what else he's done outside of Power Rangers, but he's really not fitting for this role. I mean, the way he's written and the way he, he comes off in his lines, they just don't seem to match. But overall, this was a nice episode. It dealt a lot with how seriously Nate treats Steel and how highly he thinks of him. Now, when we got to see Roxy being very confident when she, they were making their plans and when she had the Burke kids hostage, which I really like because she's such a charismatic character just the way the actor portrays her. I mean, she doesn't really do anything to make her a deeper character, but just the way she acts is just so fun to see on screen. Anyway, this was a nice return to the season. Pick up right where I left off. You don't really need to know too much from the last episode. And you can just keep going forward. Plus, the whole Cybergate issue is resolved because all the remaining pieces are put into the vault storage. Which means Scrozzle cannot do anything more of it again. So yeah, this episode wasn't too special, but it was just enough to get the mid-season back rolling again. And hopefully episode 10, we really get to see what progresses forward. Anyway, this has been Jargus. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you on the next review. Until that time comes, let the power protect you.